Okay, and welcome back students taking math for business and finance and math applications. And we're doing the chapter 14 summary practice test. And we only have two problems left, number four and number five. So number four, Nancy Billows bought a $7,000 desk at furniture.com. Based on her income, Nancy can afford to pay back 700 per month. The charge on the unpaid balance is 3%. The U.S. rule is used in the calculation. Remember, the U.S. rule comes from Chapter 10, and it states that um, whenever we pay, uh, make a payment, in this case, um, $700 a month, uh, the first thing that gets paid off is the interest, and then the remaining portion of that payment get, goes against the principal. So calculate the balance outstanding at the end of month two. Okay, so let's see here. What are we going to need here? Okay, so we're going to need to know the, the month. All right, and we're going to need, um, we want to know at the end of month two, so we know we're going to have month one, and we're going to have month two. And we know that we're going to have a balance due. And we know that the balance at the uh, for the first month is seven thousand. Okay, we know that um, since the payment, the monthly payment, is seven hundred dollars, so that's going to be um, for both months because it's always seven hundred dollars. And from that monthly payment, we need to figure out the interest. We need to figure out the principal. All right. Um, or, and, uh, in other words, I, and I'm saying principal, it's the amount that's going to be applied against the principal. Or, you know, we're talking about concepts here, and so it's just different terminologies. I'm just using the word principal because that's how you know, accountants think, but basically it is a reduction in the uh, balance due. Okay, so that's what I'm calling the principal here. Okay, and then of course, if I know the reduction in the balance due, or I know the reduction in the principal, that will, when I take that and I subtract it from the balance due, that gives me my balance outstanding. So, um, for the first month here, <clears throat> we know that uh, the first thing we know that the monthly payment is seven hundred dollars. But what we have to calculate is the amount of interest, and we know that the principal or the balance due is seven thousand, and that the unpaid balance is uh, the charge on the unpaid balance is three percent. So we multiply 7,000 times 3%, we get $210. So my interest is $210, and that comes off of the $700 first. Okay, so that eaten, that gives me the remaining amount of my uh, principal, or $590. I'm sorry, $490 of a reduction in the balance due, or that principal. So I take the 7,000. And I subtract the 490, and then I get a new outstanding balance of $6,510. Okay. So the outstanding balance at the end of month one becomes the beginning balance for uh, month number two, so $6,510. Now I'm going to erase this, but we're going to be basically doing the same thing. Okay. We need, you know, we're going to make another payment of 700. We need to know our interest. Well, on $6,510, the finance charge is 3%, which means um, that comes out to $195.30. Okay. So that's $195.30 as the interest, and we subtract that from the $700 which gives us $504.70 is our reduction in principal. Okay. 
And so then we take our balance due, which was the 6510, and we subtract the 50470, and that gives me my balance outstanding of uh, 6530. So that is the balance outstanding at the end of month two, 6,530. Okay, so pause the video, rewind it and rewatch it. Um, if you didn't understand that briefly, I'm just gonna quickly summarize here. Um, from the information, I needed to know, uh, you know, I knew it's asking me at the end of month two, so I need to create two months. And my balance due is how much is owed, okay? And I know that, um, I have a monthly payment of $700, okay? And from that monthly payment, you know, it goes into two portions. It goes into interest and principal, and using the US rule, which is almost all of the time, we apply the payment against the interest first, and then the remaining amount against the uh, balance that's due, or the principal. So I start out with 7,000, um, my monthly payment is 700. I multiply the 700 by the 3% is the finance charge, which gave me my interest of 210. And I'm subtracting it from the 700, which gives me the $490 in the reduction. So I take the $490 in principal, and I'm subtracting it from my initial balance of 7,000, and that gives me my balance outstanding of 6510. Okay. That 6510 becomes the beginning balance for month number two, and I repeat the process. Okay, um, I have I have to figure out how much interest is on the 6510, so I multiply it by the three percent. Okay, and that tells me my interest is 195.30. I subtract it from the monthly payment which gives me the uh, principal or the reduction in the balance due of 50470. And of course, I take that away from uh, the beginning balance of 6510. And that leaves me with the balance outstanding of 6530. Okay. And, um, you know, just be aware, um, since I do have a tendency to work ahead a little bit in creating slides and stuff, and the next chapter is uh, the cost of home ownership. And when you're looking at a mortgage payment, okay, you know, you always think in terms of uh, uh, principal and interest, you know, your mortgage balance and the interest on that mortgage balance. Okay, so, um, you know, this here is a chapter on installment buying. And it doesn't matter what you're buying, okay, whether it, it's, you know, I have a tendency to talk in terms of houses because mortgages and down payments and interest are relatively easy for people to wrap their mind around um, on a house. But you have the same thing that applies against a car and people can wrap their mind around that. But, you know, let's say you had a notes payable, you know, where you're in business and you're borrowing money from somebody for a short term, short term period of time, you know, $3,000, say for the course of three months at 6% interest. Okay. You know, and you have to pay back on a monthly basis. You know, it's the, all the same thing. It's the same concept just applied in different situations. And I've said it before, pay attention to the concept and understand the concept. And then all of those idiosyncrasies just fall into place. All right. Um, number five here, and this one, hopefully is relatively easy because it's an average daily balance and I don't want to take up too much time here. So um, on 7-3, I have a balance of $400, okay? And that is going to be for 15 days. Okay, so that means uh, I've had the $400 balance for 15 days is 6000 Okay, then a payment is made of $100. Okay, so now my new balance on 718 is 300, and that is for a total of nine days. So the 300 times nine is 2,700. And then there's um, on the 27th there's an additional charge of 250. So now my balance goes up to 550 on 727. 
and I have that for how many days? Okay, the question is how many days? So this is 727, that's a 30-day billing cycle. Okay, well, 15 and 9, 15 plus 9 is 24. And if this is a 30-day billing cycle, and I've used 24 of those days, I have six days remaining. So um, this 550 is for six days, and that gives me 3,300. Um, we're going to add all of these together, and that comes out to $12,000. And of course, we divide the 12,000 by the 30 days in the billing cycle. And that means our average daily balance is $400. Okay. So that's my average daily balance. Now, uh, the amount of the finance charge, I have um, the $400 average daily balance. And it says here, assume a 2% finance charge. So that means my finance charge is $8. Okay, and that's it, all right? So with that said, um, let me just jump back here real quick. Um, if you need more practice on the average daily balance, um, that was problems 14. Uh, let's see here. 14-7, okay, in the drill problems worked out the average daily balance and let's see what else do we have here and 14-15 okay so if you need more practice or you want to see that again you know go back and and look at those two problems okay so that's it for this chapter you know and as you saw it's basically the same thing just and i said this now like three or four times it's the same concept um, and when we move into the next chapter in the cost of home ownership, you're going to be seeing the same thing except how it's applied against, uh, you know, a mortgage in a house. Remember, installment buying is the same exact thing as a mortgage. You're buying the house on an installment on payments. So uh, chapter 15 is going to be a relatively quick one. I don't think there's going to be too much in theory in that uh, in those videos. All right. So we'll see you then.